You've invested your money into some great kitchen knives, but after only a few months, they're as dull as your old cheap knives. You run it on a steel repeatedly, hoping it will restore that edge, but still nothing. The remedy is you need a stone, not a steel. Believe it or not, it's very easy to create and keep an edge on any of your knives. So pay close attention because here's your very basic knife sharpening lesson. Sound good? Let's sharpen? Now the techniques that I'm getting ready to show you will work on any knife, whether it's a boning knife, paring knife, or even your chef's knife. Now because the chef's knife is definitely the most popular kitchen tool that I use, we're going to sharpen that one. I always like to first gauge the sharpness, or in this case, the dullness of my home chef knife. To do this, I'm going to run it from the heel to the tip of the knife on a piece of paper. And as you can see, this knife is not sharp, like at all. So here's what we're gonna do about it. Let me introduce you to the whetstone. It's also known as a water stone. Now for this one specifically, there are two sides and you're going to see two numbers. One that says 1000 and one that says 6000. Now these numbers represent the measuring of their coarseness. The lower the number, the more coarse, the higher the number, the more fine. Anywhere from 200 to 600 grit is labeled as coarse. Anywhere from 600 to 1000 is medium and fine can be labeled as 3000 all the way up to 6000 or even ultra fine, which would be around 12,000. I personally feel the 1000 medium grit stone is just the most versatile and probably the best to use overall. And while the coarse and medium grit stones are used to help create the edge, those fine and extra fine grit stones are used to help polish them. And obviously I need a little of both for this knife. And you can pick up these stones on Amazon or even a local knife shop. One of my favorite things about them is they come with this block and even a little rubber insert to help hold the stone in place. Also, there's a black grip mat right on the bottom to make sure this thing isn't moving when sharpening. Love that. So what I'm going to do is fill up a 400 third pan. Honestly, any pan will work about two thirds of the way with cold water. Then what we're going to do is submerge this stone. After all, it is called a water stone. These stones are pretty porous, so if they're not fully saturated, then they will dry out during the sharpening process. And this will cause the knife blade to catch and give your edge nicks and dings. We don't want that. So to begin the knife sharpening process, I always place down a kitchen towel just to make sure nothing is moving and it's stabilized. Next, I'm going to add that little wooden block that it comes with, place in the rubber insert, and then because we wanna create the edge, we are gonna put this 1000 grit side up. In addition, you'll also need a small bowl of water because you will add a little bit of this water throughout the entire process. What this water is going to do is help float away any waste material and it will prevent the stone from clogging. So for most everyday home use, what we're looking to create is a double bevel. This is where both sides of the edge are at the same degree and meet right in the middle. Now there are varying degrees of the angle of the bevel, but we are gonna stick with the most common edge of 20 degrees. But first, I'm going to take a few practice strokes without even touching the stone just to get used to the motion before we actually do it. So here's how I was taught to hold the knife while sharpening. This is a right 90 degree angle. Cut that in half to 45 degrees, cut it in half again to 22.5 degrees, then go a hair more. Now there are some chefs and master knife sharpeners say it's about the degree of two quarters or three pennies. Well, I don't always have change on me, so knowing my right angle has always worked out for me. However, do what you feel works best. Once you have your degree set, you now want to ensure your hands are in place. Thumb is on the spine, pointer finger is on the heel, and you'll be taking something known as edge trailing strokes, which work away from you, as opposed to edge leading, which is where the knife blade goes towards the grit, and this can cause an undesirable burr. And when you flip it over to do the other side, the thumb is on the heel and the pointer finger is on the spine. Also, you'll be wanting to use your other hand to provide some pressure. I like to use two fingers when doing this, and you'll want to apply in between two and four pounds of pressure. Over time, you'll know this second hand, but to start, it's just a good idea to push two fingers on a scale to get an idea of what that pressure feels like. And remember, anything in cooking is perfected with practice. Over time, you're gonna have this no problem. So to get started, I'm just going to dip a few of my fingers in that water, and then I'm just gonna add it right over to the stone. Now I've learned over the course of my career that knife sharpening is a bit like making gumbo. Everyone has their own way of doing it, but only theirs is correct. Then I'm going to set the degree of my blade using my two fingers starting at the tip of my knife and using my other two fingers to provide that pressure. I'm going to sharpen away from me while taking note to gently curve it around the tip through the belly and all the way to the heel. 
Then I'm going to flip the knife over and start from the heel to the belly and to the tip doing the same exact process. Now there for sure are a couple ways to do this. I was always taught whatever I do on one side, you need to do on the other. So if I'm taking 10 strokes on one side, I need to do 10 strokes on the other. And I'm going to go back and forth on each side. I do this in between 10 and 25 times per side, depending on how dull my knife is. Now, as an alternative, you can also do 20 strokes on one side and then flip it and do 20 on the other side. The goal is to ensure we have an even bevel. And while I'm doing this, just as an FYI, the lower the degree, the sharper the knife as the resistance will be lower. Like let's just say a 15 degree angle. And I promise you, you'll absolutely be able to achieve this with practice. Now we are looking to create a bird. That's that curved raised lip where one side of the edge meets the other. You want this to be even all the way down the knife as you sharpen it to reach the apex where the materials start to fold over the blade. You'll be able to feel it on the side of the knife you're sharpening as your finger will sort of snag. That's the burr. Now, if you start seeing some gray color, that's just the knife material starting to grind down away from the blade as we sharpen it. It's completely normal. Just dip a couple fingers in your water and add it right to that stone. You'll be all good. Now, once you've taken your desired number of strokes on each side of your knife, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe with my towel. And then you want to feel your knife gently with your thumb. It should tug a little bit. And this will indicate that your knife is actually sharp. If it's not, it will be smooth and honestly feel like next to nothing. Thing. And also be sure to go against the blade, not along with it, because you can absolutely cut yourself. Now, another common way to sharpen your knife is doing it in sections. So starting from the tip, working your way to the belly and all the way to the heel, you take several strokes back and forth at that same 20 degree angle, but you're only applying pressure on those back strokes. You don't want to do it pushing forward. Remember, edge trailing, not edge leading. And as you go down the stone, you'll take about three to four strokes per section of the tip, the belly, and the heel, while also moving your two fingers down the blade as well. And again, however much time and however many strokes you do on one side, don't forget, you gotta do it to the other side. Comey's, it is so important to have a sharp knife. It will cut and prepare things more easily and be a whole lot safer. We want the blade to do the heavy lifting, not our forearms, not our triceps. That can lead to disaster. I've been there and I've even been to the ER a few times early in my career and trust me, it's not awesome. And now to polish up my knife, I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe down and then flip it over to that 6,000 grit side. I'm going to wipe it down, apply a little bit more water to the stone, and then you can do the exact same techniques. Whether you're doing one stroke per side or perhaps 10 strokes and then flipping it and doing 10 strokes on the other side, you can absolutely be the judge. And you can also do it in those three tip belly and heel sections, taking three to four strokes per section and doing that on both sides. Now, another way that I was taught to polish up your knife is similar to doing it in sections, but instead of going back and forth, and again, remember just providing pressure on that edge trailing backstroke is doing it in circles like this. Doing three to four circles per section, providing pressure only on that back edge trailing stroke. I do this all the way down the knife and on both sides. However, what I want you to do is whatever you're comfortable with and what you like doing. And I can't say it enough, this will come with practice. After you do it a few times, you're gonna have it down pat. And just to give it a quick wipe and take a look, this knife is pretty dang sharp right now. Now to take care of your whetstone, I just remove it and air dry it before I store it. Now if it's wet, it can crack and you definitely don't want that. So be sure it's dry before storing it. And now another important piece in your sharpening toolkit is something known as a honing steel. This is to be used in between sharpenings to help tune up your blade. This is absolutely not used to create an edge. It's used to help keep your edge. And there are ways to do this as well. Holding it in one hand, taking those same 20 degree strokes on each side all the way down the steel. Remember to curve your knife as you work from the heel all the way to the tip. Now that little plate at the top of the handle is there to protect your hands from getting cut by that knife. But if this just makes you nervous at all, you can also sharpen it blade out. So just turn the knife and do it in the exact same way. Now the other way is to put the honing rod right standing upright on your cutting board or surface and run it back and forth at that same 20 degree angle. But for me, I find this horribly awkward and I hate it. But if you like it, you do you. And it really doesn't get any more basic or fundamental than this in your kitchen. Knowing how to sharpen your knife 
and keeping it sharp for every time that you use it. So important. I know you can do this. And of course, right now, let's give it that paper test and see where we're at. And the moment of truth, from the heel to the tip, slicing right through that paper, this thing is razor sharp, my friends. And I just wanna test it out on some vegetables. You can see zero resistance, clean strokes all the way through, especially on a tomato. And let's see if I can get that coveted, very thin tomato slice while not even holding it with the other hand. Yep, this thing is crazy sharp. So now that your knife is super sharp, maybe you wanna put those knife skills to the test. Well, I have an awesome video that covers every basic knife cut. You're gonna love it. I'll see you on there.